Osama bin Laden is not an easy subject. Characterizations of him vary wildly. The most common, because it's the official narrative of cardboard cutout simplicity, is that he's the world's number one villain, the diabolical mastermind behind the events of September 11. Another view, Osama is the conscience of Islam. Well, globally, Osama is like a Rorschach ink blot. His character and role morph into what various publics project upon him, based on what they're led to believe. Take books. There's an adage you can't tell a book by its cover. Maybe so, but you can tell it by its index. Bin Laden, the man who declared war on America, is by Yosef Bodansky, former senior consultant to the Pentagon and U.S. State Department. Bodansky explains a vast global conspiracy, it says in the foreword. The index entries on Bin Laden in this 440-page book run almost two pages. But there are just four references to the CIA, mostly brief, and they reveal nothing. Yet the decades-long $8 billion CIA covert operation in Afghanistan was also its largest ever, according to numerous sources, including journalist John Cooley in his book, Unholy Wars, Afghanistan, America, and International Terrorism. Contrast the Badansky book with this one, Taliban, by Ahmed Rashid. He's a Pakistani journalist who's covered Afghanistan for 21 years. In his index are eight entries about bin Laden and 11 about the CIA. Now back to bin Laden. What do most sources agree on? We know bin Laden is born in Saudi Arabia in 1957. Okay, we're not sure about the year. His father becomes a close friend of the king and fabulously wealthy. Bin Laden Corporation becomes one of the largest construction companies in the Middle East. In this business, you're dealing with the Pakistani intelligence, the ISI, Saudi intelligence, the CIA. With his family's blessing, Osama becomes closely associated with the CIA in the Afghan war against the Soviets. Bin Laden Corp, Ahmed writes, built major training camps for the CIA. In 1986, he helped build the Coast Tunnel Complex, which the CIA was funding as a major arms storage depot, training facility, and medical center for the Mujahideen. At this point, Bin Laden's story, like Stephen Leacock's horse, rides madly off in all directions. My questions, did he turn against the CIA, maintain ties while making anti-American statements? Was he manipulated? Former associates describe him as deeply impressionable, always in need of mentors, Rashid writes. You're forced to turn to a larger canvas, as in the final draft of this to-be-published book, The War on Freedom, Causes and Consequences of 9-11, by Nafiz Ahmed, Executive Director of the Institute for Policy Research and Development in Brighton, England. He's an Oxfam campaigner who specializes in writing international reports on human rights. News of his reports have been carried by Reuters, Associated Press, The Guardian, The Independent, The Jewish Chronicle, and The London Jewish News. Ahmed writes that bin Laden is merely a piece in a chess game. The stakes of the game are the last of the world's oil reserves and the Bush administration's consolidation of power to pursue a drastic, unlimited militarization of foreign policy on a massive and unprecedented scale required by long-standing elite planning while crushing domestic dissent and criminalizing legitimate protest. I believe that if we shrink from testing Ahmed's overview and accept only the headlines of the day, we will fail to see the forest for the trees. The USA helped recruit, train, and equip thousands of killer Mujahideen in the anti-Soviet war. Ahmed's book and other evidence shows the recruiting of and training of terrorists, including those in Al-Qaeda, has continued for years. The White House went underground with this aid. This is detailed in the 1993 book, The Outlaw Bank, A Wild Ride into the Secret Heart of BCCI. BCCI stands for Bank of Credit and Commerce International. It collapsed after exposure of its massive fraud and corruption. The book's authors are Jonathan Beatty and S.C. Gwynn. Beatty was an investigative reporter and senior correspondent for Time magazine. Gwynn, Time's economics editor and author of Selling Money. 
Further evidence of the long and deep involvement of the CIA in terrorism is found in the 1987 book, Crimes of Patriots, a true tale of dope, dirty money, and the CIA by Jonathan Quitney. Quitney, at the time, had been a Wall Street Journal reporter for 16 years. He wrote that neither the director of the CIA nor the deputy director had, in his career, shown any reluctance to shed American or foreign blood in covert military operations. The book details how some of the biggest names in American defense and intelligence were involved in an operation that promoted the dope trade, tax evasion, and gun running. Michael Springman is a Washington lawyer. He worked for the U.S. State Department's Foreign Service for 20 years. He spent two years as chief of the visa section at the U.S. consulate in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. He says superiors repeatedly ordered him to issue visas to unqualified applicants. It was illegal. He protested. He's just written this article in the reputable Covert Action Quarterly of Washington, D.C., and was interviewed by the CBC radio program Dispatches. I had not been protesting fraud. What I was protesting was, in reality, an effort to bring recruits, rounded up by the agency and Osama bin Laden, to the U.S. for terrorist training by the CIA. He details numerous cases. The State Department did not run the consulate in Jeddah. The CIA did. Of the roughly 20 Washington dispatch staff there, I know for a certainty that only three people, including myself, had no ties, either professional or familial, to any of the U.S. intelligence services. Now what bugs me to no end is that mainstream media journalists function as if these books, written by the most professional in their own ranks, they function as if these books don't exist. Fellow journalists, the dots exist. For goodness sakes, connect them while you can. There are plenty of what we call in the news business pigs, solid current evidence, new dots. But these dots, past and present, are never connected. So, as always, the intelligence community has gone almost immediately to Osama bin Laden as a principal suspect. And we don't know yet know why they have done that, but it seems to be something of a tradition.